night. So I'm here at uh, Hertz Donuts um, trying my first cinnamon scroll for the trip. Um, and it's enormous when I open the box. Looks amazing though. So let's have a look. I got through probably over half of it, which is probably enough for breakfast. So, um, yeah, very nice though. Hurts Donuts. So I'm here in Oklahoma City, um, just about to catch a streetcar. One really interesting thing about a lot of the small cities in the US is that they're putting streetcars back in after getting rid of them in the 50s. Just like in Australia, um, they've realised that uh, public transportation is quite useful. So, yeah, Oklahoma City's got a little system that um, does a bit of a loop of the downtown area. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to jump on board and um, yeah, have some public transport fun. One of the interesting things about the US is the um Next up, Susan Hale Park, sponsored by Integris. It's how everything is sponsored by something, including tram stops, which is very interesting. So I'm here in um, downtown Oklahoma City. I've just arrived at the um, memorial to the Oklahoma City bombing. So on April the 19th, 1995, a man called Timothy McVeigh set off a bomb in a truck out the front of a building um, right here. Uh, and it killed 168 people, 19 of whom were children. America has a bit of a history of um, uh, extreme right um, groups who you know believe there's a conspiracy that the government is um, uh, you know trying to take over people's individual rights and things like that. Here on one side of the reflecting pool it's a memorial to the 168 people who died They're each represented by seats. A lot of the people who died were government employees going about their everyday jobs as I said before, a number of them were children. You can see here that some of the chairs are smaller. They represent the children. At the time, it was the largest terrorist attack ever carried out on American soil, and it's still the largest domestic terrorism event carried out on American soil. I'm not sure what you think of when you think of Oklahoma and Oklahoma City, but um, it's certainly not not this. Little canals with uh, little river boats, uh, funky cafes, amazing donut places. It's really quite a nice place. We have a food scene going on here. I obviously came at the wrong time of day. I don't think anything's open yet, but um, yeah, there's little river boats here. Go up and down the canal. I'm walking along here, um, middle of Oklahoma City, I've um, had several people say hello. People are very friendly. As you see in lots of American cities around the place, um, a lot of the a lot of the um, blocks are empty. But it's great to see here in Oklahoma City that there's um, lots of uh, building work going on, filling up a lot of these spaces. All putting interesting things like that bocce court um, on some of those empty blocks.
Over there we have Route 66, it's the famous road that goes from Chicago through to LA. Um, I'm only driving on little sections of it, but anyway, this is the section that goes through Oklahoma City. Um, and I've stopped at this place called Pops Arcadia. And basically it's kind of a museum slash store that sells every kind of soft drink you could imagine. So I'm pretty excited about going here. There's even some pretty weird ones. Got dirt soda, cucumber, pimple pop, <laughs> pickle flavored soda, pumpkin spice tonic, bacon soda. Wow, mustard. Awesome. Well, here's one my teacher in year four talked about from Indonesia or Malaysia or somewhere. Kickapoo joy juice. I think I need some moxie, so uh, get some moxie cola. And we've got an Australian section here, which is just Bundaberg, but that's a pretty good representation. So I've managed to select 10 sodas to take home. Um, some of them are just your normal uh, flavors, just different brands, and some of them are very, very weird. Um, so it's been pretty exciting having a look through this place. I've swapped out my other hat for a uh, more appropriate one for driving along Route 66 and uh, being in this part of the US, so Oklahoma hat there. So coming up over here on the right is a Route 66 icon. Um, it is a round barn. So I'm here at the Donut Hole, spelled with a W, in um, Wichita, in Kansas. I just had a chat to the ladies who run the place and they said that they have up to 300 different flavours here, which is absolutely amazing. Anyway, asked for the recommendation, Cosmic Chocolate was the recommendation. So it's um, chocolate, uh, chocolate donut, chocolate glaze, and uh, these cool little uh, colourful buttons on top so cheers mm. it's obviously a cake donut it's a bit denser than your raised ones but nice and chocolatey it's not just brown it's actually actually chocolate these little lolly things are very crunchy and fun behind me here is a a huge mural on the side of a grain elevator, as they call it here, or silo we have in Australia. Um, and uh, it is apparently the biggest silo mural in the world. I think it's pretty impressive. So at the moment I'm in a salt mine about 650 feet below the ground in the middle of Kansas, a place called Hutchinson. And um, this salt mine is uh, mainly used to mine salt for the roads in the snowy parts of the country. Um, it has been used in the past for table salt and things like that, but um, it's also used as a document storage facility. Um, I've got lots of different um, things in here, government records and film reels and things like that. So. Yeah, I'm going to go for a bit of a wander through here. They've got, as they do here, they've got uh, amusement rides and a little train and a pitch black experience thing to do. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It's just like a series of rooms with these big, um, like behind me here, sort of big massive columns. And then they've got all these um, sort of compartments where they've mined out the salt. Very geometric. On the way down here, where they were telling us about how the salt actually um, like forms around things, it kind of moves, and um, when this, it's quite um, structurally sound because it doesn't um, crack and fall, it kind of moves a bit like a very, very, very hard 
Play-Doh. So I'm here in Hutchinson, Kansas, and I'm just about to go into the Cosmosphere, which uh, has heaps of different bits and pieces of space paraphernalia, including some things from Apollo 13, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about coming in here. This is one of the main reasons why I came to this museum. I'm very excited. Behind me is the command module from Apollo 13, so that mission where it was a miracle that they came back at all. There, that's the inside. Very excited. I'm in Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve in the middle of Kansas. Um, it's just about sunset. There's a historic ranch building behind us there. I believe it used to be a ranch. A ranch, as they'd call it. Um, and it was, I think, donated to the, to the state or something like that um, to be turned over and to let the grass grow as it used to be. Yeah, it's very peaceful. I believe that this stuff here is what they call tall grass. It looks like grass and it looks rather tall. And uh, supposedly this sort of stuff covered pretty much the entire um, Western Plains area of the US. Heading back to the car now. It's gonna get dark soon. Still got a fair way to go before I get to Kansas City. So I can't hang around long. <laughs> 